I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Join us as we live and sail in the Pacific Northwest on our 40-foot steel sailboat. Well, after a couple of weeks of hanging out in the Port McNeil area and the islands around the area, we are heading south again. We were planning to stay here for a couple more days and hopefully get some fishing in and catch some more salmon, but <laughs> as happens, the wind decided it was going to blow up um, after us having dead calm for weeks. So we're taking that as a sign that it's time to head to another anchorage that's going to be more protected from the northwest winds. We're leaving about an hour later than we probably should have been, but we didn't check the report early enough to leave on time. So we're heading out at about slack right now, half an hour before slack, trying to go back into Night Inlet, into one of the anchorages that we stopped at on our way out this way, because it should be a lot more protected from the northwest winds. We set out and put the sails up before the wind even arrived, with very high hopes that we would get enough wind to use them. Not too far into the journey, the wind showed up and we were able to motor sail in order to keep our speed up and avoid peak current. But as soon as we entered Night Inlet, we lost our wind. Finally sailing! <laughs> now the current isn't as bad. We're in a big wide sound here. I can't remember. I think it's Clio Sound. And uh, we have steady wind in here, so we're just gonna sail down the sound. Hopefully into our anchorage. Well that should be the worst of the current out of the way for the day, so that's exciting. We time like pretty much everything so that we're at slack current when we go through passages that could be like dangerous or worrisome when there's current and today we did not do that because the forecast changed on us and we didn't realize it so we left late. So <laughs> we got through that one bit which is where the most current would be. It's like the narrowest bit that we had to go through and it was fine so we're good now I guess for the most part. The current is still picking up but it's a lot less in amongst these islands than it is out in Night Inlet. So yeah, we're just slowly ghosting along with the sail up, which is awesome. <sighs> Stress can come down now. So the thing about currents that makes it scary is that you can get whirlpools and you can get back eddies and you can get just boils where it's like it'll take your keel and do whatever the heck it wants with it and spin your boat and send it weird places. And if it's narrow or there's a lot of rocks in the area, there's always that worry that you're gonna run into something. So to be through that and away from that is like a big load off. It's a lot less stress. safe and sound. Now we're gonna go drop some crab traps and hope that we can get some crab for dinner. All right, so for lunch today we're making a meal that's almost completely from the ocean and from being grown on boats or from being harvested around the beach around the boats. So we're having crab with uh, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes were not grown on the boat but the mashed potatoes have garlic, nodding onions, chives, and basil all grown on a boat. 
were picked from the beach. So the knotting onions were picked from the beach. The other three things were grown on our friend's boat, and they're in the same bay as us right now. So they have a 50-foot power boat, and the whole top level of the boat, pretty much, they've turned into a garden. So they've grown their own garlic, they've got chives, they've got basil, they've got peas and beans and like a whole whole garden set up. They've even grown their own potatoes from seed. That's how badass they are. So the lunch today is the whole one crab that we caught today because crabbing is apparently not very good around here. Crabbing's not really good anywhere right now. Pretty sad actually. We think it's because the commercial fishermen have come in and taken a bunch of it. Taken most of it. But anyway. So we've got one crab for lunch, and we're gonna do potatoes with that. It should be enough for the two of us anyway. And then we're putting chives, basil, garlic, all grown on our friend's boat, and nodding onions that we collected from the seaside this morning. So it should be pretty tasty. And the potatoes just came from the store. I also boiled the potatoes in seawater, which added extra flavor to them and saved some more fresh water for us. So Logan's gonna go try to catch some rockfish, and I'm gonna meditate. Not positive where yet, that's the plan. I found a spot overlooking the changing colors of the water as Logan looked for rockfish. And that night we decided to sit out and watch the stars because we were blessed to have a crystal clear night. Beautiful day here at Dead Point. Terrifying name. Beautiful place. So last night we stayed up extra late to watch the stars because the whole sky was just full of stars. It was so clear out and there's next to no light pollution because there's like only tiny villages around here. Yeah, I think we're just gonna hang out and explore a little bit more today. We're starting to wait for a weather window to get through Johnstone Strait. The issue that we're going to be having is that the currents this week are running either really early in the morning, like for the direction that we need to go, or later in the afternoon, and later in the afternoon is when the wind really picks up. And the Johnstone Strait pretty much all summer has been like gale warnings every day, or severe wind warnings every day. The one day that you guys saw us go through was like one of maybe five days this whole summer that's been calm. So, obviously we want enough wind to sail, but we don't really feel like going in 30 to 40 knots, which was what was forecast for yesterday. So, yeah, we're gonna wait another week and hope that we can catch the currents coming out of here, I guess probably early in the morning next week. And then we really start our, our descent back to South Island. Not very excited about that part, honestly, but we get to see some beautiful spots along the way again. Um, we're gonna hit the Sunshine Coast on the way back instead of going down island, so that'll be awesome. And we'll just hopefully get to enjoy more of this weather in the meantime. It's beautiful out.
Well, the water is really cold, but the air is not, <laughs> and there's like no breeze. So I'm gonna jump in the water. Max, cut it out. So Max and I are just going to pick some berries, but Logan spotted that bear from the boat, so thought I'd take a little detour and show you guys the bear. Did not seem very bothered by us, that's for sure. So just hoping he doesn't come around to where we're going to pick berries. Luckily for me, the bear stuck to his side of the beach but I did keep my eyes open and the bear spray closed, just in case. So I'm picking off the whole branch, well not the whole branch, the whole berry branch. I don't know what you call that. And then I will take the berries off of there later, but it's just easier right now to do it that way. It's probably better for the plant actually to take the whole thing off because then it's got it doesn't have to put energy into something that's not even growing for it. And I don't have to worry as much about getting bit by bugs for as long. So that's the logic there. I always make sure to leave between one quarter and one half of what is on the plant when I forage for anything and this time was no different. All right, so we're in location number two. We're gonna go pick berries called Kinnikinnik. And they're like these small, almost cranberry looking berries, but they're super dry. You kind of have to mix them with something, you can't just like eat them raw. But my plan is to put them in pie or something else to kind of thicken it up. So that's what we're gonna do. Go pick some kinnikinnik. Ground cover stuff, that's all kinnikinnik. of the Kinnick Kinnick berries. But this is also my first time picking these, so I'm not really sure what we'll even do with them. So I just got a few, and yeah, see what we can make with them. Once back on the boat, I went about taking all the Salel berries off their stems. In all honesty, the Kinnick Kinnick berries, as well as most of the berries we picked this summer, are still sitting in the freezer waiting to be turned into jam. But things have been hectic and I just haven't had time. Well, that actually produced a lot more berries than I thought it would. Slightly more than half that container. Um, and it was, it was overflowing with stems when I put it in there. I thought it was going to be more stem than berry, but... Slightly more berry than stem, so that's good. That's exciting. That's enough for a pie tonight. Right, Logan? Yes. Right, so we're going for a walk to some kind of ruins called the Monk's Wall. Apparently it's like this really cool rock wall. And I think there used to be a trading post here as well. So there's ruins for that. I'm not quite sure if it's the same ruins, like if the Monk's Wall is part of the trading post ruins, but we'll get back to you on that.
Despite being called the Monk's Wall, these ruins actually had nothing to do with monks and are actually the remnants of a trading post that used to be here. There is still pottery and broken glass all over the beach and forest from the trading post, which has clearly been gone for many years. This would be the, like a stone house, you can see the walls going back. Oh yeah. They even use mortar. Join us next week when we explore an area with a ton of interesting First Nations history and see our first grizzly bears of the season. Exactly nice. So refreshing. <laughs> so so nice. refreshing. So lovely. <laughs>